Hello everyone, I'm Audrey Plum, a statistician minister in charge of social innovation. Now, what social innovation makes everyone's business with everyone's help. When a society faces something that's genuinely new, a new challenge, everyone in all corners of society are together and propose new innovations to solve this together. Around um, a year ago, in early 2020, um, the world faced the coronavirus uh, for the first time from many jurisdictions. For the second song from Taiwan, uh, because we had a SARS 2003 experience, so we played the SARS playbook and started health inspection for all 500 companies from the time uh, on the first day of 2020. Now, after one month, in the end of January last year, um, Chen Yixuan and Feng Xitan, two public health experts, came to our demonstration in the cabinet office and presented their international model. They discovered that because the basic reproduction rate, the R value of the new virus is so high, even if we have pretty good isolation and testing measures, we cannot eradicate them or eliminate the virus. Rather, if less than one quarter of the population wear a mask and wash their hands, then there is no way that we can not give them a lockdown. However, they also discovered if we can not get three quarters of people at 75%, wearing masks and washing hands, then we can actually eliminate the virus. So the question becomes, how can we, within just a couple of short months, get three quarters of population evenly in each and every jurisdiction, no matter urban or rural places, to get access to masks and also wash their hands? Now, uh, we had multiple ideas at the beginning. At the beginning, we thought, because we, um, Produce at that time less than 2 million masks a day. This is a country with 23 million people. We have to ration it. And since people are more familiar with convenience laws, maybe we can ration out those masks in convenience stores. But we still find out the only way to get convenience stores to ration out masks is to use mobile payments. But less than three quarters of people in time use mobile payments. So if we use that as a real time ration device, we will not succeed. So instead, uh, we chose to uh, go with the GovTech, the government technologist working in the National Health Administration. And the National Health Care in Taiwan is universal health care, and we also have broadband as human rights, so universal broadband as well. More than 90% of pharmacies in this country have a fiber optic point to the NHI office. So we thought maybe that's the best way to do it if we convert the pharmacy system so that just by getting recurring prescriptions, anyone can use the National Health Policy Fund to get a ration box. Then we can get accessibility for all, and that's what we did. Indeed, within just three days, the GovTech people coded the necessary systems so that people can get the masks from the pharmacies along with how to use them properly. The pharmacy will say, wear a mask to protect your own face against your unwashed hand, which is critical because mask wearing, the unless linked with hand sanitation, does not work. But at the same time, the civic technologies are also hardware at work. Here you're seeing how it will and function come to civic technologies from China who invented this one that lets you visualize in real time every 30 second it updates with the latest availability of the mask in the nearby pharmacy. So you can go to the nearby pharmacy that still has some in stock instead of queuing in vain. Theoretically, this should improve the queuing efficiency and improve accessibility for the mask. But some um, pharmacists are also coming up with their own social innovations, namely take a number system. You see, the pharmacists sometimes collect the national cost at the morning, and instead of handing people the mask, they just keep the cost and tell the customers to come back in the evening when they're less busy uh, to reduce the size of the queues. And during the lunch break, they will swipe the national health cost. But on the map, because map depends on swiping the cost to get the availability numbers, it will look like that for the entire morning, they didn't sell any piece of mask. And then during lunch break, suddenly it sells everything. Um, and that leads to a data bias, a inaccuracy in the data, so much so that the pharmacist VMA actually posted on the front door of the pharmacy saying don't trust the app exclamation mark. Now imagine how I would feel looking at don't trust the app. Uh, and, but instead of saying oh the pharmacist must swipe the IC card or that the civic technologies cannot display the maps, we didn't put any uh, one above the other. Instead I asked this critical question that I always ask people who complain. I asked the VMA pharmacist if you're the digital minister, what would you do? 
And then he said, oh, I'll come back uh, tomorrow, I'll ask my group. And so they consulted with him themselves. And then the next day, they told me that if I went away for them to push a button and disappear from the map for days, like a pale floating device, then they're perfectly happy with the conservation map. And that's exactly what we did. So by co-creation and listening to the people who are closest to the pain, closest to the suffering, we succeeded in co-creating a system that visualizes the real-time availability of devices. And then it's matter. There's some district that did not have 75% coverage. There's some people, especially young people, who didn't go to pharmacy at all during the month, the initial month in February 2020. So why? It turns out that they work here in the house. By the time they finish off work, the pharmacist has already sold out in the mask, so they don't even bother doing. In the more uh, rural places, um, the young people still live with their families, so they can give the IC card to their family members who will queue on their behalf. But if they work alone in an urban setting, in a large city, then there's no one else that they can trust their IC card to. So we have a problem and we need to fix it. And then we thought that this time, this is Zhu Zhiyuan, a petitioner who back in 2017 petitioned that the national income tax filing system is, in a quote, explosively hostile to the users, end of quote. Um, and that's because he uses Mac. Uh, and at last year, in 2017, the Oracle Corporation discontinued the Java applet, that's a uh, dependency of the tax filing system. So suddenly it becomes hard, perhaps, anymore. But instead of um, you know, defending our policy, we simply said, okay, everyone's business is everyone's help. So we invited Georgina to help design the next filing experience of 2018, first just for Mac and Linux in 2019, also for Windows users. And this year, everyone can just use their phone instead of depending on cloud reader, and everyone can file their um, tax income tax in very short, like five minutes or so. So we thought about this system because this system already does authentication pretty well. So we connected the system that can co design with us with the National Health Insurance app, and we call it EMAX 2.0. So anyone with their phone uh, and their um, ID number uh, and also their mobile number to their own name can quickly authenticate themselves and then pre order the mask to a nearby convenience store and then receive. The gap shortens uh, in March when we introduced the EMS 2.0 system. And this is MP Gohan. And before she joined uh, the parliament, she was VP of data analytics at Foxconn Group, so she knows a lot about data. And this is she uh, with the open street map that displays this zoomed out uh, trend map of supply and demand of the real time pharmacy mass availability. She was making an interpolation to Minister Chen Shijong saying, even though that uh, we think in Taipei City, uh, the capital of Taiwan, we think that the pharmacy distribution, our convenience store, is actually pretty close to the population centers. It's almost an exact match. We used to be quite happy about it. Um, however, it's actually obvious. Because if you count the time to take public transportation to reach each pharmacy, it's uneven. It's only even with equity on the map if everybody, you know, ride on helicopters, which is probably not the case <laughs> in like a linear distance, but actually in the more rural places, maybe they spend up to three hours or so to reach the nearby pharmacy that looks close on the map but really isn't. Uh, and then by the time they reach the pharmacy, maybe they put that in place. Um, and so instead of defending that policy, however, Minister Chen Shijong again said, oh, legislator, you should teach us. Um, and then she worked with the open stream community and within just 24 hours, we changed our distribution uh, mechanism to reflect the actual demands of the rural areas and then also introduced the pre-ordering system so that the rural um, areas can also order to the 24 hour open convenience stores. And that's when we reached around 75% uh, in our mask coverage. So by April, uh, the R value dropped to be below one and we knew that uh, the pandemic would soon be contained and then eliminated. But there are still some people who did not go to pharmacy, and neither did they use an app to order the mask to a convenience store and who bought it. So it turns out that there are people who prefer 
to use their national health insurance card um, with vending machines who prefers to have a uh, 24-7 urban uh, vending machine for the mass expense, for they do not like queuing at all. Maybe they are people who are handicapped, maybe they are people who uh, do not like queuing in line. For whichever reason, they are people who prefer to interact with such vending machines. And thanks to the smart city office and the tiger city, they work with the government um, corporation to design just that. So it's like an autonomous um, pharmacy, and it links also to the national health insurance um, VPN network, and it contains the machine that can authenticate not just your national health insurance card, but also offers mobile payment options, so that one can complete the chip purchase by oneself. The only drawback is that it was only available in the uh, Pakistan city. Um, and so in the places that also need such services, this startup did not at the time have the resource to scale to the entire uh, country uh, without you know, a lot of investment by the traditional banking machine vendors. And in order to shorten that time and to service the people who are handicapped to be maximum inclusive, we thought that way that can actually ask the convenience stores, which also have um, ATMs, uh, to serve essentially as a kiosk to authenticate the people. Because in Taiwan, the 12,000 or so convenience stores, pretty much all of them have ATM machines. And so um, I work with uh, Grandma Young, uh, who is the young friend of my own grandmother. Uh, my own grandma is 88 years old, and her young friend, Grandma Young, is um, 77 years old, uh, and she did not like you at all. Uh, and so we went a focus group and we invited the, the grandmas uh, to try out our new arrangements at the convenience store to be maximum inclusive. Now, when I introduced this great idea of using their ATM cards to authenticate themselves, to transfer some money uh, to the CDC, to the Passenger Disease Control, and then use that receipt as a claim uh, so that by the next day one can be uh, for a bag of masks uh, at a convenience store counter. When my own said, it's a really bad idea. If you introduce this ATM best system, I might as well go back to pharmacies, even if I don't really like queuing at all. And I'm like, why? And she said, I don't want to use the ATM. Um, people keep telling me, she said, that if I enter my password and other people see my password, I may accidentally transfer all my savings at it. Here is this uh, warning, this 165 uh, scan warning hotline that's just pasted on the ATM uh, kiosk. And so she would stay very far away from any ATM, and she really did not uh, trust any payment system other than using some points uh, to pay for it, exactly like she would at a pharmacy counter. And there is just no way that I could convince her. And because if she feels unsafe, and she would not use this new design, and she would not get other people to use this design, and there's no such information anymore. So just like the pharmacists who have their own ideas, we need to trust the elderly. Uh, and I ask again the question, okay, Grandma Young, if you are the digital minister, what would you do? <laughs> and she thought about it. And she said, why don't you just use the national health card? Why can't I just use the health policy card to insert into the kiosk in a convenience store and authenticate myself? Well, it turns out that all the convenience stores also have their own kiosk systems where they can actually file income taxes Thanks to uh, George Chen's design, they can actually use health IC cards to insert into the kiosk and file their income tax. The facility is there. So we redesigned the system completely. They uh, would insert the health card to authenticate the purchase, but they would not make the purchase at the kiosk. Instead, Grandma Yang would take that QR code, that barcode, to the counter and then count the coins, feeling very safe, and knowing that she would receive the back of the mask uh, the next week. And by the time that she got the mask, she can also use the test code to re authenticate, to renew the subscription, so that after a couple of weeks, she will get another back of mask, and so on and so forth. And so by respecting the elders and their wisdoms, we also promise many other use cases, for example, the immigrant workers 
who are part of Prime Plus service but may not have a ADD card or a debit card, who may not have a mobile phone number to give your name and so on. And after we introduced this new system in April, we went way beyond the 75% and how we became safe from the pandemic. And finally, after the EMAS 3.0 system, I got a message on Twitter. And the Twitter person mentioned it actually publicly, saying, OK, I have plenty of months here. And I didn't collect any ration funds for the past few weeks anyway. I want to dedicate this quota to the international humanitarian aid. Uh, and that's when we introduced EMAS 4.0, where people can use the same NHI app that they used to pre-order those months, but then dedicate any quota that have not yet collected and only our foreign service to send it to international humanitarian workers. To date, there's more than 7 million face masks donated this way uh, from 700,000 or so of people. So this is what, how we say here, Taiwan can help. So um, I think the message uh, of my talk is really that it takes the entire society to innovate, to counter the pandemic with no lockdown. And this is how Taiwan overcame also the infodemic with no takedown. And this is also how we're going to counter the climate emergency together. Thank you so much.